traders here, Chris Capri, Second Skies. I got a new video for you here, how to draw support and resistance. This is such an important trading skill, whether you trade Forex, you trade stocks, commodities, global indices, it doesn't matter which market you trade. If you're trading from a chart or using a chart in any way to make a trading decision, how to draw support and resistance is a super important skill. And so in today's video, I'm gonna give you five tips how to draw support and resistance so you can really improve the skill and start finding levels like a professional and using these for your trade decisions. So let's go ahead and jump into this. Tip number one, support and resistance without price action context is less effective. So this is important to understand. A lot of traders kind of get hung up, they draw their support and resistance levels but then they don't pay attention to the price action context around that. And you actually need to reverse this equation. The first thing you need to be doing is understanding the price action context. Who's in control of the market, who's not? Where is their momentum? Is it increasing momentum or decreasing momentum? Are there impulsive and corrective moves to the upside or downside? What kind of trend are we in? All of these things are important for establishing the price action context. Once you do that, then when you draw your support and resistance levels, they're going to make much more sense and have a lot more weight and give you more information. Are you drawing a support level where the market's pulling back into it correctively or impulsively? That's important. Or is this a resistance level you know, on a corrective structure just before a major level in a higher time frame? Are we in a particular volatile trend? You know, All these things matter and will give more power and information to your support and resistance levels. So it's super important to not treat these in isolation. You have to kind of marry them and integrate them with the underlying price section context and order flow behind it. So tip number one. Number two, when you're drawing support and resistance, always draw the most obvious support and resistance levels. A lot of times when people are practicing this skill, they end up drawing every single area on the chart that they think is support and resistance. And this just kind of really creates a cluttered chart, looks very messy, and it doesn't really reflect kind of the most important levels, order flow, and swing points on the chart. So to kind of give you an example in comparison, let's go ahead and look at the pound dollar on the daily chart. Nice little bull trend, we encounter resistance here, pulls back to support, comes back to the same resistance, now back to the support, breaks through it, treats that prior support as resistance now, and then again pulls back to it. So this is kind of super clean. We have one kind of major support level here, one major resistance that gets broken as support, so it's called a row reversal level. So now we have some very clear lines on the chart to understand what's going on with the order flow and what are some of these key swing points. But let's look at the same chart with kind of drawing a lot more micro support and resistance levels here. So look at this one now. When I look at this, this looks very busy. It almost even hurts my head just even looking at it. And it doesn't really give me that much more information. It does kind of on a micro level, but not really enough to make the overall experience worth it. Like I'm not getting any more benefit by drawing all these kind of sub levels here and here and here and here. It doesn't really add to my trading process to really clutter my chart. So when in doubt, draw the most obvious support and resistance levels, the ones where the market is having the strongest reaction to, and ideally levels that are respected by both sides of the market. Okay, next tip, wicks or the candle bodies? This is a super important question. It's one of the most frequent questions I get from y'all around, hey, when I'm drawing support and resistance levels, do I draw it on the wick or do I draw it on the body? And the answer to this is neither. You draw it where the price action is the most clean and that can be with the wicks, that can be with the bodies or a mix of that. Some mentors I know say only draw it on the wicks, some say only draw it on the bodies, but the underlying reason why we're drawing support and resistance levels are trying to get an understanding of where there are certain prices where the order flow in the market between the buyers and sellers are defending or attacking a particular level. And that's gonna manifest in a lot of different ways. And sometimes around a particular price that's gonna produce a lot of wicks, and sometimes that's gonna have a lot of bodies close on them, and sometimes it's gonna be a mix of everything in between. It doesn't really matter wicks or bodies, you wanna draw them where they are the cleanest. And so to give you an example, let's look at this chart on the Swissy Index. So it's an hourly chart, 
Swiss index this is their major index. We have a nice bull trend. Run into resistance here, again here, pop up, kind of run to a line in the sand of sellers here at 1060 or 10,060. And it comes right back to this support here at 10,020. Goes a little bit past it this time here, then rejects off of it cleanly, comes back to support here. And then look at this, this time only the wick touches it. So it can't even close near it. Whereas this closed above it, this closed on it. This one didn't even get close to it. Open, hit it by to the point and then sold off. And so if you look, when you draw these two particular support and resistance levels, in my opinion, these are the cleanest areas. This is the areas where you get the most amount of consistency and kind of harmony between the support and resistance and the buyers and the sellers here. And so it kind of just shows itself in the price action. So when you're drawing your levels, don't think about wicks or bodies. Just think, hey, where do things line up the cleanest? Wherever that is, that's where you want to draw your lines. And sometimes when you're drawing them, you start off and it's not there. Just keep finessing it until you find a line that really just looks super clean and fits the best. So that's the next tip here. And another important tip, thinking of support and resistance like zones. So one of the things that people often get caught up in early on when they're kind of working with support resistance is to think about support resistance as these lines in the sand that, oh, if the thing gets one point or one pip or one cent above it, it's no longer, you know, bearish, it's bullish and it, or vice versa. And you can't really think about that. And the reason being is that there's a lot of players in the market with different kind of horizons, sizes of positions, stop loss, take profit, intentions. And depending upon what kind of trader they are, will determine how close or how precise or how far away they're willing to go within that zone. A day trader who's only looking for 10, 20, 30, 40 cent moves in a particular stock is looking for absolute precision. And so they're gonna to wanna to get to as close to a particular zone or line or price point as possible. But a long-term trader who has a much larger target, they're not thinking that they need to get so precise down to the cent. They're just kind of thinking, okay, well, within a couple points of this zone, I wanna get in. And so you have different players with different intentions and different horizons that are all placing orders around a particular price. And that's gonna create various levels of players, orders and order flow around that zone or resistance or support or whatever, it doesn't matter. You're gonna create a lot of different players around that. So orders will never cluster exactly on a particular price. Some will be just above a, an important price, like a support or resistance zone. Some will be just below it, some will be right on it. What that ends up doing is it ends up creating a real zone of order flow. So when you think about support and resistance, don't think of them as lines in the th sand. Think of them as zones of order flow where buyers and sellers are parking their orders. And when you do that, it tends to start to make much more sense in terms of how you relate to these, in terms of the price section, the context, the order flow, and how to trade them. And so to give you a really good example, let's look at EA, Electronic Arts here. So this stock has been kind of ranging between 103 and 90 flat for months now, you know, since early April this year. And so if you think about it, look at where all these different kind of areas where it's kind of finding support. You know, it's finding support here, it's closing on this here, a little bit lower here, a little bit deeper into the zone, down to 90 flat, a little bit higher, some buyers come in, push it up a little bit. Some of them come all the way down here, some of them here, some of them way down here, some of them come in here, push it all the way up. And so what you're seeing is when you look at this, you can tell that there's a lot of buyers that have been willing to hold this particular stock up for months now, but they're not saying, hey, it's 90 flat or it's 90, 50, it's 91. They've been saying the whole time, hey, I'm willing to get in anywhere between 91, 75 and 90 flat. And as long as you did that, several times, the last three, four times, you made some money on this here. And so important not to think about this as a singular line in the sand. Remember, think about support resistance as zones of order flow, and they can be kind of very narrow or they can be very deep in this case. And once you start to do that, that should really change the way you make trading decisions, particularly around support and resistance. Okay, last tip. Levels respected by buyers and sellers are stronger levels. 
So what do I mean by this? I got a really good example here on GPOR. This is a stock I've been trading recently here. It's in a downtrend, kind of finds its way. Here's a one hour chart. It's in a downtrend, it kind of sells off, finds resistance here, forms this nice corrective structure between 467 and 505. And you can see it's just pretty clean across the board. The support is pretty clean. If you had bought this three times, you would have made money. And if you had sold at this resistance level, you could have made money four or five times on this one here. And so, but look what happens that we have our clear support level in a downtrend. And then look what happens when it breaks it. The market breaks past it, goes about 30 cents past it. And what does it do? It goes right back to this prior support level and is now treating as resistance. Boom, 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 boom. Why is this important? Well, when you have a level that's being respected by both sides of the market, that means before, you know, in this case, buyers were placing orders here, and now we have sellers placing order here. Why is that important? It's telling you that both sides of the market are considering that particular price super important and super relevant in terms of trade direction. You know, at the, a certain point in time, they want to be buying. Now they want to be selling at this here. And so that tells you that both sides in the market are respecting that particular level. That's telling you that a lot more players are saying, hey, this is a super important level. This is where we're placing our trades. So any particular support and resistance level that is respected by both sides of the market, where buyers and sellers are placing orders there, those will end up becoming stronger levels for your trading. So super important lesson here. With that being said, I hope you enjoyed this video. I want you to make sure you subscribe to our channel. If you liked it, make sure to give it a thumbs up and also list your comments on there. I know some people feel Wix only, some people feel bodies only. Hey, if you disagree, that's okay. Just share with your ideas why and what are some other important tips that you've learned along your trading journey about how you draw support and resistance. So with that being said, I'll look forward to your comments and questions on that. Again, subscribe to the channel. Make sure you give your feedback. And until then, good luck trading out there, and I'll see you in the next video.